Happy Mother's Day. Well, first to my mother, mom. Happy Mother's Day to you, you Thank beautiful. You. To all of the mothers out there, the grandmothers, and even those who play the role of a mother, and even you dads out there that are playing both mom and dad. Happy Mother's Day. So mom, you had seven kids, right? You've affectionately said you had seven baby elephants, right? And I loved every minute of it. Yeah? I have many great memories of you children of raising you all. Of course, I didn't have such a good childhood myself, mm -hmm. so I made sure that all you children had a great childhood. I like mean. when I would go to the store <laughs> oh, yes. and all of you would come yes. and I'd let you all get your own part. Yes. And you'd throw in two things. So yeah. since it's Mother's Day, right, I'm gonna ask you a few questions, kind of like a little interview with my mom, but you, she has so many great pearls too and wisdom and treasures that she can share with us. So, so with seven children, I thought maybe you can give a couple quick funny stories of good memories with your kids. Yeah. Start with Michael, the oldest. Start with Michael. Okay. Mike was a prankster. True. I remember in high school, he went and got fake paint that wasn't real and sprayed a young girl's car. Wow. And after school, her dad came banging on my door, screaming, mm. where's Michael? and nearly gave me a heart attack. You oh know, I'm gosh. looking at this man so angry. And turns out the paint was not real paint. So Michael had to go apologize and wash the car. Oh boy. But Mike was my greatest helper at home. Yes. He cleaned and washed my floors and babysit. Actually, when we took a plane ride one time, I had to keep saying, Mike, can you take Jay to the bathroom? Mike, can you take Charles? <laughs> and Mike, would, and when we're waiting to get off the plane, a lady turned around and looked at me and said, I wish I had a Michael. That's great, <laughs> I love it. All right, here we go, Dawn. Okay, so Dawn was also a prankster. Mm -hmm. And I recall she actually had the nerve to take a whoopee cushion <laughs> to school one day. And, and the bus driver, I guess, wasn't one to smile a lot. So she kept making these sounds to make him laugh. And she actually took it in class and was doing that. Hilarious. Yeah. So now next is Robin. Well, let me tell my own story because okay. this is funny. Okay. I was thinking of when I, I think it was like nine years old, we were out at the pizzeria and you were trying to tell somebody something very serious about the Lord or whatever. And they had a jukebox and I was with Jason and Charles and we were fighting probably over which song and you were so mad and I remember you pulled me aside and you're like, you get home, you're getting a beaten. And I was like, oh God, no, the wrath of moms. So we get home and you, I, on the drive home, I was like, mom. And you're like, what is it? You know, you're always so rough when you're like, I'm like, mom, I think I want to give my heart to Jesus. So we get home and we, I, you pull up a chair in the dining room and you go, come here, all very serious. And you go, <laughs> He said, now tell me why you want to give your heart to Jesus. And I like, I knew it was going to get me out of a beat. And so I was like explaining why, you know, I don't even remember. It was like, oh, because I know I need, I've been bad and I know I need to do right and things like that. So talk about manipulation when you're a kid. And I didn't get a beat either. No, you didn't. No, I got out of I, I it. I showed you mercy. Yeah. So next we have Jason. Jason, Charles. Those two boys oh were boy. always mischievous, yes, right? Yes. And always getting in trouble with mom. True. And stressing me out doing things. I remember we just had a new couple at the church. Hmm, and they brought their son, who was about the same age, around 11, 12, to the house. And we're having a nice talk and everything. And all of a sudden, they fight with this kid. And I think they gave him like a black eye or something and the mm -hmm. parents went crazy. And it took a lot to talk to the parents to get them comforted to stay in the church. That was typical. Yeah, always that, they were always doing stuff like that. I remember when they were younger, they got me so angry one day that I got the yellow stick and I ran yeah, after the them. yellow stick that you, she had this plastic stick that you took off of like the playhouse we built. <laughs> 
or that you you had for us and it must have broke off so it was this long yellow stick and she'd sit at the table and if we were too loud especially the boys you would just hear her banging on the table and that was like the warning like next time i'm coming for you and so i was running after them and they were running like two little demons up in their room <laughs> and they got on top of the top bunk bed yeah and they're standing against the wall like this, screaming like as if a murder is going to happen. Funny. I just looked at them and I lost it. And I just started to <laughs> laugh and laugh. And I had to get down off that ladder and I'm sitting on the bed laughing so hard. I actually was hyperventilating. So funny. And huh? they're both looking at me like yeah. wondering like what happened? Like what's going on? Right. But that really happened. I don't know. They just, I just broke out well, they, laughing They like kept that. you young. No, they yes. kept you moving because it was never, ever a dull moment in this house. Years later, Jason told me mm -hmm. that when he had to spend time in jail, mm -hmm. the only thing that got him through it was when he was thinking on his childhood mm. and all the happy times he had at home. Even the wrath of mom. <laughs> like, oh, how we missed missing. it. <laughs> okay, so Kimberly. Kimberly Jean. My kitten cat. The best story, one of the best stories I remember about Kimmy was she was about five and it was early in the morning. The children were getting up for school and we had those, uh, what do you call them, windows? Like a sky, sky the sky, skylights or whatever. And they saw a huge rainbow over right. the house. And then I heard the front door slam. And I said, who went outside? <laughs> and they're yelling, Kimberly. So I run to the door. I open it and I'm looking and she's running as fast as her feet can fly up the hill. And I'm yelling, Kimberly, get back here. Where are you going? She comes back and she's looking at me ready to cry. And she said, you wouldn't let me get the pot of gold. And I turned around, like trying not to laugh. And I so said to, cool. to all the children, I go, she was going for the pot of gold. And of course they all started laughing. But that was one of the stories that, that created was- created mine yes, from Little. Kimberly. Mm -hmm. And not only created, but money mine. Oh, for sure, mind. for sure. Okay, last but not least, Casey, little yes, Casey man. Casey, Casey was our joy. He, he was. He was born a month and a half before mm -hmm. Dawn went to heaven. Right. When he was about five, I, I used to ride in the car and he'd be in the car seat behind me and I'd have the oldie station on. Mm. And I'll never forget, I look in the mirror and he there he is without his front teeth <laughs> singing, um, what was that song? Oh, little darling. Yeah, and he was mimicking the words and making the faces of oh. the guy singing and it was so, so funny. Cute. Actually, I had him doing it for everybody because I couldn't laugh so He hard. always brought joy yeah, and laughter. Yeah. Okay, mom, so what advice would you give mothers who are raising children? Well, I raised all your children on principles and laws yes. from the Bible. You know, like what would Jesus do? So I was pretty strict, but it was for your own good. After Dawn passed, I recalled that Dawn once told me in high school, her friends were all talking about how they partied over the weekend, drinking and having fun. And Dawn said, well, where were your parents? And they said, with us. And Dawn looked at me and said, mom, you, you're always strict with me, but that's because you love me. Mm. Mom, their parents don't love them. So being strict and having rules and laws really pay off in the end. So mom, I only ever remember good things, right, about you, but were you always a good mother? <laughs> Tell no, that. no, no. Okay. I, I was not always a good mother. <laughs> mm. At first, it was more of an obligation. You know, like if you have little dogs, you take care of them and feed them. Right. There's an obligation. Do what you have to do. Okay, right. But I was selfish mm. and I didn't love anyone, not, not even myself. Mm -hmm. Okay. But after I had Jesus mm -hmm. come into my heart and life, mm -hmm. God is love. So God put love in my heart, yes. not only for myself, but for others, but especially for you children. Wow. Well, all of us kids have different personalities, right? We've had ups and downs, things like that. Regardless of all that, we all really loved you and love you. Right. 
and you feel that, right? Yes. And I'm sure there's been times when we've been very stressed as a mom, worried, most moms have that, many sleepless so. nights, praying and things like that, right? What has been a consolation to you during those hard times? God, of course, is my consolation. True. In, in good and bad. But no matter what my children ever do or have done, I still love them deeply. Although it breaks a mother's heart to see their lives destroyed by making wrong choices. But I've been blessed regardless with happy times like my son Charles Jesse who mm. would make me laugh so hard I would hyperventilate mm. and be totally. screaming and this happened many times. I'd be screaming, Charles, shut up. And the more I would scream, the more he'd go on acting mm -hmm. something out and making me laugh. Mm -hmm. And actually, Casey's done that. Uh, I remember in the back seat on the way home, it was pouring and him and his friend Robbie were in the back mimicking uh, Bubba from, I think, oh, Forrest, Bubba from Forrest, Forrest Gump. Gump. Yeah. And they were mm -hmm. naming every shrimp and sounding just like him. And I, and I was laughing so hard. I started to cry from laughing and with the rain, I couldn't actually see and it was very scary. I'm screaming, stop, shut up. And of course they kept going on. Well, all of us, I think even Kim, she used to, you'd be like, make me laugh when right. we were little. Right, I called, call you down and yeah. say, um, make me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> Just do some big act out Ma there. Mainly Kimberly, right? Jason, wow. Charles. Oh, Kimberly one time came down the steps while I had two pastors visiting. Uh, with her feet backwards in her jeans, like she had no legs, like Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> Lieutenant Dan from Forrest Gump again. Right. I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, oh my much. God, these pastors are thinking I'm making fun of cripples with her doing this, you know. Right. But this is the comedy that was always in our family. Yes. Yeah. Dad was here, he would vouch and say, you are the virtuous woman and wife and mother. Right, so what does that mean? Explain that to people. What does it mean to be the virtuous woman found in Proverbs 31? The virtuous woman of Proverbs uh, 31, the virtuous woman and mother, would have a noble character, mm -hmm. which is very hard to find, the mm -hmm. Bible goes on to say. Mm -hmm. She's worth more than rubies. Oh, mm -hmm. well why? <laughs> worth more than rubies? <laughs> Because she got to put up with a lot of crap. <laughs> Excuse me, Jesus. That's true, though. But That's her word. husband has full confidence in her. Yes. And she lacks no good thing because she brings him good and not bad all, all the, the days, days of, of her his, life. Of his life or her, her life. life. Okay. And her children rise up and call her blessed. And her husband praises her, which you know dad does. Yes, he does. Okay. It says her charm is deceptive mm -hmm. and beauty is vain, mm -hmm. but a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised like dad, your mm -hmm. father, mm -hmm. when he said, when he thought of marrying me, mm -hmm. he said, gee, she'd never cheat on me because she'd have to cheat on Jesus first. And he knew I wouldn't do that. That's awesome. That's a noble character and a virtuous woman. Mom, thank you for your pearls of wisdom. I love your testimony, dad's testimony. I love all, I love our, like how everything about you from before Christ, after Christ, now, you really are the best. I just want to leave you with one question though, mom. And we're here, uh -oh. we're on the broadcast, you can't lie, so let's oh. be honest. You have seven children, who's your favorite? Ah. Come on. Now you know, <laughs> when Jason was alive, here he would come. always say that and keep pushing on me in front of all you kids and, and say, go, tell him. tell him, mom, tell him who's your favorite. <laughs> and I would never ever pick anyone to say that. Do you really love us all the same? <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I love you all, yes, with my whole heart, but you're all so different, and right. you all have a special place from Michael down to Casey. I get it. But I Mom, never I get like it. to say who's my favorite to cause one of you right. to have a complex. Mom, okay, I'm totally joking. From all of us, we love you, Mom. We know we're all your favorite. Well, happy Mother's Day, and enjoy your day. Enjoy your day, Mom. I will.
She's the best. And you know what? We are blessed at Labor Love USA, right? To have Pastor Marilyn as our pastor, our mother. She's everything, our teacher. And she really prays for each and every one of you. Remember, you can go on laborloveusa.org, type it in, hit the donate button, send in your tithes, your offerings, and send in your prayer requests. You can click on any of the videos on there to encourage yourself during the week. We are here for you. Or you can mail it into Labor Love USA, 3215 North Fifth Street in East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, 18301. Have an awesome day.